I'm Dr. Konstantinos Balitsas, I'm the Admissions Tutor for the uh, Electronic Engineering Department, uh, welcoming you to Brunel University. Now, we usually start here because uh, I want to show you the extent of the area of our labs. We see four towers, this is Tower A, this is Tower B, Tower C and Tower D. Each tower is about three to four floors, each floor has about four to five labs and including the ground floors, we have a total of about 87 labs just in the engineering. Brunel has spent an enormous amount of money equipping this lab with cutting-edge technology. We have all sorts of labs uh, spanning from uh, green screen and broadcasting to electronic engineering and robotics to aerospace and mechanical engineering to formulas and electric uh, motorcycles to motion capture studios and uh, uh, telecommunications as you see. Uh, Tower A is usually used on design students. Tower B is for electronic engineers, uh, communications, robotics and stuff. Tower C is for computer systems engineering and this is where most of our computer center is. And Tower D is reserved for uh, physics experiments or uh, physicists actually get it. Now, it is impossible for me to show you 87 labs, so we're going to be running from one lab to another. I'm just going to try to show you about 10 of those. Just keep in mind that depending on the project that you run in, you can have access to all of these labs. And we're going to see some of these, so follow me. Right, now this is our green screen, come on in. This is part of our digital media, and you can see that we have our own green screen. Uh, we shoot films here, we have graphic stations very high-tech graphic stations and a console to edit everything so we can do a lot of broadcasting which we actually have a broadcasting lab as well with its own antennas uh, moving on this is our aerospace lab and you can see here again students have worked in many of these designs uh, airplanes, um, uh, solar powered airplanes, uh, my electronic engineering coupled with uh, aerospace engineering students built that a couple of years ago and we launched it from uh, the stratosphere actually from 100,000 feet and it used artificial intelligence to land itself much like the space shuttle does. And we have 3D printers and we can print our own stuff. Uh, and again, it's not only, only for aerospace engineers, it's for any student that uh, needs these uh, for their projects. Follow me. Now, another amazing lab, which is actually student-led, is the Autosport uh, Engineering. This is mainly occupied by students. We do very little teaching here. And the students themselves build these amazing machines. Uh, this one is going to be electric. This is um, uh, well, a proper motor. And they spend time here, both mechanical engineers and electronic engineers, almost equally, because especially in the electric parts and the controlling of the engine, you need the electronic and the computer systems engineering as long as well as, well as the mechanical engineering. Um, uh, right now you can see that we're taking uh, place in the Brunel Racing, in the Isle of Man race and they're converting lots of cars. Usually this is buzzing but they, most of the students are in the lectures now. We will start with the electronic engineering lab which is also occupied by students now. So, this is one of our new additions. This is our Ruger robot. Uh, it's a very precise pneumatic uh, robot that students are using through this computer to guide. They can drill, they can make 3D um, uh, printing, uh, all sorts of things. And you can see some of the well, remains over here and the, some controllers that we're just using. Another lab that is not heavily used at the moment is the computer systems engineering lab. Now, in contrast with the electronic engineering lab that it was mostly hardware, computer systems engineering is a combination of hardware and software. So they deal with controllers and programming controllers uh, to build all these new smart devices and Internet of Things. So you can see more computers here 
more uh, boards with controllers and well they do have their own power supplies and stuff but they lack the detailed hardware that they exist on the other room. So the electronic engineering room and computer systems engineering uh, lab. Follow me. Now, if we walk one more down, you will see a student lab. This is the press lab. This is one of the societies uh, that we support. This is a student lab. We don't teach here. We actually are not even allowed to be here, more or less, because this is just student space. And you can see that it's equipped with all of these equipment that the department is supporting the students uh, with. You can see, well, some of this I wouldn't mind having. <laughs> Who paid for all these? And luckily, the university supplied money for a lot of the equipment that we I have. I don't have that. Can I have one? No, I don't want <laughs> um, So, they can use this space whenever they want. They form groups, they run very, very interesting projects. These are student built uh, 3D printers, along with many, many other projects. They are specializing in robotics and in rockets, launching rockets. We just visited just a few labs from Tower B, which, as we said in the beginning, was mainly electronic engineering. We didn't even see half of those, but let's walk in the corridors between Tower B and Tower C. Here, most uh, labs are mechanical engineering because they actually carry some heavy machinery and they have to get it done. Regardless, these are all labs that all students can use. Uh, I'm going to show you just a few of them. Um, we have a supersonic wind tunnel for the aerospace engineers, which is not working at the moment. We have uh, the engines laboratory and the thermodynamics. And you see, this is one of the few times that it's actually quiet because um, they've got five test engine test bays. Usually, when you're here, you hear the engines revving at 17,000 RPMs. And I think they're going to blow themselves up one day, but they haven't yet. yet. Um, and they've got the thermodynamics at the end. Again, all students can use this. Uh, we've got um, some laser laboratories here. Right. This is our power lab, it's uh, one of our newest labs and it's currently being used by students. We are uh, actually uh, having a lab today. Uh, this is Joanna, one of the lecturers here. And you can see several machines and they are packing up actually because now it's time for the next class. Follow me, I'll show you another lab. Yes. Again, this is a control lab that has to do with anything that needs controlling. For example, this is a model of a crane. Um, if a crane tries to move some uh, load like this, then the load will start balancing like this. So it needs to have some control, meaning it will move and then it will slow down. So this will actually remain uh, uh, vertical. Now, we do all sorts of control. We do helicopters, we do robotics, we do balancing. Uh, you can see lots of motors and lots of controllers here. We've seen about 10 out of more than 80 labs. I haven't shown you anything about chemical engineering and civil engineering and the motion capture and the design and the woodwork and the plastic uh, uh, shop. Uh, there are many, many labs here, but instead of taking my word for that, why don't you join us in one of our open days or the applicant days, which, uh, well, coming in, you will experience this firsthand. You will talk to the students, you will see the labs, we usually hold some kind of a competition with uh, a hands-on lab that you um, do yourself and there's a prize at the end. And you can see all the university life around you.